Dr. Monica uh, Griffin, the chair of the board of the Right Livelihood Foundation. Uh, <clears throat> Professor Manfred, the Norbert the, from the Copa campus, and of course, like uh, the person who is behind this report. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, on the behalf of uh, the Institute of Human Rights and Peace Studies, uh, Mahito University, I'm very pleased to uh, be here with you and uh, be a part of uh, this the report and uh, the workshop today. Uh, frankly speaking, uh, last night uh, it was the first time that I had a chance to read the report because <laughs> I just came back from the province and uh, uh, of course like I have to come here uh, to, the, to do the opening remark and then uh, I, I really need to know what is inside the report. <laughs> But the thing is, like, um, when I read the report, uh, it reminds me when, really, when I was a child, uh, when the UN uh, uh, <coughs> Child, uh, child Rights Convention was released. I was still a child by that time. Um, I got a calendar from one organization of the UN, I don't remember. And uh, on the back of the calendar, there were lists of these child rights. I read all those uh, written uh, behind that uh, on the back of the calendar and I was wondering why are all these things have to be written down? You know, because like I was born in a quite uh, wealthy family. And I, did, I didn't realize that uh, it was very important that everyone should have those things. And uh, I didn't know that uh, it was uh, not, not everyone uh, access to those rights as I have had when I was that age. Uh, when I started working, because I had a background in the medical science, and I, when I started working uh, uh, with the HIV patients when there was no medicine in Thailand, there was a chance that uh, I had to encounter with a family, uh, with one uh, little girl. The mother, who was very strong, was killed by the HIV virus and the AIDS. Uh, and the father was a very weak person. He, just, he didn't know what to do, what, uh, anything. And uh, we are trying to get the antiretroviral therapy for both the father and the child. But uh, because on the setting when, uh, where I was working by that time, did they allow father and the child uh, to stay together? So the child was uh, about to send into uh, an orphan place, just taking, uh, in the, uh, taking care units for the children only. I didn't know what happened to me. I just. Actually, like uh, on the scene, I was like walking by. I just went straight to those officials. I grabbed that uh, little girl. I told them, so I take care of her. I, 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 by that time, I was like uh, 20 something. I didn't had uh, a chance to take care of anybody myself. And I took that child and uh, I was like, I was consulting my doctors and nurses friends. Like, uh, what would I do with this child? She was uh, very sick and uh, could be dead in, in any minute. And of course, like if a child who is uh, not uh, legally binded to me is dead in my hand, I think I, I would be uh, ended up in prison. Uh, anyway, it was a long struggle to have that child in uh, my, my, uh, my care. And uh, I took care of her for a couple of years. Uh, until right now, to, uh, I sent her back to, to uh, be with uh, her family. Right now, she's 17 years old, uh, living happily with her family. But anyway, the thing is, like, uh, since the very beginning when the UN uh, Child Rights uh, Convention has been uh, signed, when, when I was very young, until I started working, and up till now, uh, reading the report reminds me of all these uh, progress or struggling uh, in uh, having uh, people recognize how important the child rights should be. Uh, Fifteen minutes from here, uh, 
if you have a chance, you can uh, visit uh, the immigration police office where you can see uh, a lot of uh, immigrants have been, been detained there. And very often that uh, the children or even very, very young babies are detained somewhere and sometimes separated from their families and parents. So things are still going on and I really appreciate that at least last night I had a chance to read this report because it reminds us that there are things that we should do. The Institute of Human Rights and Peace Studies, Mahido University, uh, is really honored that uh, we are incorporating with the Global Campus and the uh, Right Livelihood Foundation in organizing this event. And of course, like uh, our, one of our mission is to promoting uh, child rights. So uh, I hope that uh, today the discussion uh, will really fruitful for uh, every one of all the participants. Uh, <clears throat> to thank again, like uh, the Global Campus, that uh, having a chance to organize such a very wonderful event. Uh, to thank the Right Livelihood Foundation the, that has a very good cooperation with us. <clears throat> and of course, like to thank all the staff of the Institute of Human Rights and Peace Studies and also like the Asia Pacific uh, Master Program uh, on Human Rights and Democratization, which is a part of the global campus. And thank of you all that uh, concerns and all of your concerns about the child rights and uh, I hope that uh, you enjoy this the event and uh, have a fruitful discussion. Thank you very much. <laughs>